Hey there, creepy peeps. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome back. If you're returning, it is that time again to recap the previous month. So let's get into everything I watched, read, and everything else. <laughs> All right, you guys already know how it starts here. Let's go ahead and start with movies that I watched in July. Here's the first thing I watched is Sleepaway Camp. That was a rewatch. Um, I mostly watched it for Girly Gore's Horror Movie Club, which is a weekly kind of like book club, but for movies. So she has a theme each month and then they pick movies for each week and then she talks about them um, in a live stream. Uh, you can go, I'll leave her link for like her Twitter and her channel in the description if you wanna find out more about it. It's super awesome and yeah. So uh, the first, the theme for July was summer camp. So the first movie was Sleepaway Camp. So that's why I rewatched it. I also felt like watching Clue because I don't know, Clue's an awesome movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, you're missing out one of my favorite Tim Curry performances. Uh, just watch it. Then of course I watched Midsummer. Like I feel like it almost feels like it was like two months ago now that Midsummer came out. Like time has time has just like become weird in my brain now. I feel like <laughs> for reasons which you guys will know very soon. But <laughs> and then I watched rewatched Final Destination three because it was a request of a patron for me to review it, uh, which I reviewed along with The Legend of Hell House, which you see right above that. Um, Final Destination. I quite enjoy it's one of my favorites of the franchise <clears throat> and then legend of hell house i thought was okay i don't know like i feel i'm more interested in reading the book i wasn't quite as excited about the movie um and then uh i'll just jump over crawl here for a second i saw the neon demon and starry eyes both for does this offend you where we were talking about like fame slash hollywood was kind of our theme and I like both of them okay I gave Neon Demon three stars and Starry Eyes three and a half I like that a little bit more and then right in between there you see I saw Crawl <laughs> our Florida Gator Hurricane horror movie which I wasn't as excited about I think the hype was a little too real for me and I ended up disappointed so I'm excited to watch it again at some point I think I'll like it better I watched Chernobyl Diaries just because it was on Netflix and I decided to watch it and it's been forever since I've seen that movie and yeah, I was reminded that I didn't like it so much. I mean, two and a half stars, like middle of the road, but yeah. Uh, and then I rewatched Terrifier again because it was on Netflix and I felt like it and it had been a while since I had seen it. So I love that movie, obviously. <laughs> also Scream 4, again, was on Netflix, was bored. I watched it. Then I watched The Perfection, which I reviewed. So I'll put a little card up at the top here if you wanna hear my thoughts on that. Netflix original and it totally snuck up on me, but it's amazing. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, hopefully you don't know what the movie's about. Don't look anything up, just go watch it. I promise your viewing experience will be so much better. And then I watched Critters, which I also reviewed. It's the first time ever I had seen Critters. Um, I'll leave a card once again up at the top if you want to hear my thoughts on that. It was pretty good. Like, <laughs> I quite like Gremlins, so I figured Critters would be quite similar. It is. It has its differences, but it's it's cute. And I watched Wishmaster. Um, that was a part of one of my patrons created like a, a movie challenge for 2019, which I'm woefully behind on. I was really excited. I'm still really excited about it, but I was playing some catch up here with Wishmaster and Dreamcatcher. The year of pushing up Daisy is I'll leave a link for it in the description if you want to check it out. It's one movie a week. So I mean, you could probably even still catch up or just jump in in the middle, you know, if you want to. I like them both okay. I gave them three stars. Dreamcatcher, uh, I mean, it was a Stephen King one, so it was a, there was a lot going on. So I feel like maybe I should read the book for that. And then I watched Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, which I've never actually seen any Tales from the Dark Side at all, let alone the movie, which is an anthology um, from 1990. Prime time there. <laughs> really, I really quite enjoyed it. Four stars, like. Also watched Assassination Nation for the first time. Finally got around to seeing it. Don't know why it took me so long. I obviously loved it. Five stars, fantastic. I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, which I intended to review, but I honestly, I told my patrons this when I took that week off at the end of the month there. I wasn't like really happy with my review. <clears throat> I really didn't have much to say 
on the movie. I think it was because I tried to do a Come With Me review and I tried to talk about the movie after just sitting through a two hour and 45 minute movie and I think my brain was just kind of like, it was like mashed potatoes at that point. Really the only thing I have to say about the movie, I'm gonna spoil the ending really quick. If you just wanna know my two second thoughts on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I'll put a notice on the screen when I'm done talking about it. So basically, kind of like The Haunting of Sharon Tate a little bit, Quentin Tarantino rewrites history. If I, I mean, I get that it's like cathartic to see these people playing these characters that really did atrocious acts get murdered most violently. I'm just like confused that if we're already rewriting history, how come in Quentin Tarantino's fantasy world, Charles Manson couldn't have also been burnt to death by a flamethrower by Leonardo DiCaprio. Do you know what I mean? So I was middle of the road on that one, two and a half stars. And then finally I watched Thirst, which is a Korean vampire movie. And I thought it was pretty okay, three stars. You'll hear my thoughts on it in a future video this month. So yeah, so that's everything I watched for the month of July. And yeah, so I already filmed myself uh, a little bit earlier in front of my bookcase talking about the books I read for the month of July. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right now. Hey, it's me in front of my bookcase again. Like I mentioned in my creepy book club review for Escape, uh, which was our July pick, um, I mentioned maybe the idea of me just sitting in front of my bookcase all the time if I'm talking about books. So that's what I'm doing, just for a change of scenery. Let's go over what I read this past month. So just super quick because I already posted a review about it, which a card should have already popped up on the screen. Um, I read Escape by Ian Rob Wright, which was our July pick for our creepy book club, which you can find us over on Goodreads. The link is always in the description if you want to see what we're reading now and what we're reading for the rest of 2019 as well. You can check that out. Um, really quick, I'll just mention this one because it's not horror related, but I know there are still some readers that watch me and that like to read a variety of stuff like I do. So this is a like YA, like contemporary romance novel. Super cute though, it's called Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. Super cute, especially if you're like millennial age. Also finish an anthology, which is You Know You Want This by Kristen Rupenian opinion like I said it's it's an anthology it's just a collection of short stories all by the same author I've never had to summarize an anthology before they're all like different but I guess you could say like very feminist in tone and a lot of them do kind of have like uh, like supernatural undertones to them so it's not I wouldn't necessarily call this horror I guess, I don't know, maybe some of it's kind of like real life horror, but I wouldn't necessarily call this horror per se, but a lot of the stories are extremely creepy and disturbing. So if you like that sort of thing, um, maybe consider checking this out. Next is also something I don't normally read, but one of my coworkers recommended it because it, while it is like a sci-fi fantasy, novel, not sci-fi, while it is like a, a fantasy novel, it's got like horror and witchy undertones to it and my coworker <laughs> knows I like that sort of thing, hence why she suggested it. So shout out to Julie, uh, who I work with for recommending this. It is Daughter of the Blood by Anne Bishop. This is one of three. This is a trilogy, the, the Black Jewels trilogy for anybody interested. Um, so obviously this is the first book <laughs> um, and this is like a fantasy novel like I, I don't know if it's called like high fantasy or something like that like world building sort of thing like whole different world universe sort of situation so like to kind of summarize it follows a couple of different characters in this completely different world and they're I guess witches it is what you can call them. They like every, they all have these colored jewels that kind of rank them. At the, at the very beginning of the book, it kind of like explains like the hierarchy of everything for you. It's a world that's definitely got its problems. And then this character uh, comes in, Janelle, who is supposed to be like the next sort of, um, 
queen, I guess you could say. Um, like just in a very all powerful being, but in this book, she's just a girl. So it's kind of about her. It's like the start of her journey, basically. I'm not summarizing it very well. There's a lot like, <laughs> so it's, it is, it's, it's cool. And I've never read like a fantasy novel like this. I've never read like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. And this is in the same section in the bookstore. I don't know how similar, I don't know that it's similar to any of those because like I just said, I haven't read them. But <laughs> if you like stuff like that, maybe check this out. I haven't read the other two yet, obviously, but I'm definitely going to read the rest of the trilogy because I liked it. I feel like every other book I read this month beside Escape is kind of, with the exception of Emergency Contact, is kind of like horror adjacent and yet not horror like I'm finding or not like horror or like witchy or something which are these next two um next thing I read was I already talked about the first one of this it's the benefit of sitting in front of my bookshelf okay I already talked about the first one of this not too long ago Midsummer Night's Mischief which is a Wiccan wheel mystery which I really enjoyed I just read the second one is <laughs> this is bell book and candlemas um so if you are also of the wiccan persuasion or just like witchy stuff or like realistic witchy stuff like obviously not everybody is a wiccan and not everybody follows that path but if you are this is super realistic <laughs> but it is a cozy mystery also so if you i don't know i've never read cozy mysteries before this series and i really enjoyed this series so give it a shot <laughs> and then the last thing I read uh, <laughs> this month is a romance novel, technically speaking. I don't think this is exactly like other romance novels in that section of the bookstore, which I literally have never read an entire book all the way through from the romance section. Um, it's just usually not my thing. Nothing against it. I know why people like those types of books, but <laughs> a lot of them are very Fifty Shades of Grey-esque and it's just not my thing. Um, but another one of my coworkers recommended this. Um, it is Dark Witch, which is book one of the Cousins O'Dwyer trilogy by Nora Roberts. I figured if I was gonna read <laughs> a first, like my first romance novel should be by somebody super well known and super prolific. Like, I think this might be like one of the only <laughs> authors right now that is like rivaling James Patterson in just sheer volume of books that they've written. So this is my first romance and this I don't like I said I don't think this is like most romance novels not as much sexy times and it's definitely not graphic. It's just like an R-rated movie. That's how I would label it. Maybe anybody like me who maybe is kind of like easing their way into the romance genre, this might be a good one instead of like jumping right into something like Fifty Shades of Grey, um, which I've read part of. And I'm sorry, that's just not a well-written book. Um, yeah, so this uh, takes place in Ireland and it's about uh, an American who goes to travel there to learn about like her family's heritage and she is a witch and her two cousins are also witches and they have like this family legacy there is this evil witch out there that uh, tried to destroy their ancestor the dark witch so that evil witch is still out there and so i guess the trilogy is about them and them defeating this evil witch. Each of the books is from a different character's point of view. So this one is from Iona's point of view, uh, the American cousin. And then the one I just picked up, Shadow Spell, which is the second one, is from Connor's point of view. And then the third one is, um, I would imagine, is from Branna's point of view. So that's what I read this month. Um, you can follow me on Goodreads if you want to see what I'm reading. Currently, I typically am crazy and read eight or nine books at a time. So if you want to see how insane I am, you can go find me on Goodreads. Uh, the link for my page is always in the description so you can follow me there if you're also a reader. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's move on now. And in terms of TV I've been watching this month, I actually <laughs> started to watch Riverdale. I just heard it's like super cringy and funny and it totally is and it's good for a laugh and it's just on Netflix so I'm really not even paying attention that hard. I kind of just have it on in the background and then I, tu I just tune in whenever something like 
cringy and funny happens. And then I also tried watching season two of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I don't know why I did it to myself because I very obviously hated the first season. And I was like, I don't know, let me just watch the first. I was bored, so I was like, let me just watch the first episode and it just totally reminded me of why I hated season one so <laughs> I'll leave a link to my rant on that in a card up here so if you want to hear why I hated Chilling Adventures of Sabrina in a rant form because I know some of y'all love a good rant I'll leave that linked for you all right now on to favorite comments for the month of July so first one comes from Victoria Price um, and she actually commented on our Does This Offend You episode, which was like the Hollywood famed theme one that I was talking about. Um, so she writes, as a sociology student, I'm absolutely obsessed with some of the questions you guys discussed. What does narcissism look like in the age of social media? Where does society draw the line of too much narcissism? What types of narcissism are acceptable? Thank you for potential essay inspiration. I just thought it was a really cool uh, comment to get that, you know, it in maybe inspired a cool essay and Victoria um, if you're watching <laughs> this um, if you do write an essay on one all of those topics uh, and you're able to share it with me can you because I would honestly love to read it next comment is from Anthony I'm not gonna attempt your last name because I'm probably gonna butcher it and I'll feel really bad uh, <laughs> he commented on my critters review I was talking about how it was the first time I'd ever seen a Critters movie and I'm 27 years old. So he wrote, awesome review in 27 years, you should watch the second one. And then 27 more years, you should watch the third one. <laughs> You're awesome, Vicky slash Nightmare Maven. Thank you. Um, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> I was like, it'll be like it, but <laughs> instead of <laughs> Pennywise coming back to like kill people every 27 years. It's just Vicky watching a new Critters movie every 27 years. Love the idea, gonna do it. So expect a Critters 2 review in 27 years time. Third comment was also on my Critters review. This one is from Dam Breaker. He just wrote fun, fun, fun. And then it made me think, cause I like, I was genuinely curious. Like I said, I wonder how many times I said fun in the video. Um, and I don't know if you actually counted, but he replied 10. <laughs> which I just thought was funny. I don't know if you actually counted. If you did, um, I love you, you're amazing. And even if you didn't, I love you, you're amazing. That was a funny comment. The last of my favorite comments was on my uh, making a Halloween flower crown video, which I'll link in a card up there. Um, if you wanna watch it, it's from my ghoul, Lizzie, AKA Carnage Candy here on YouTube. I'll leave a link for her channel in the description. Um, and she, <laughs> I mean, it's really like my own comment. She was just quoting me, but I thought it was really funny. She just quoted me saying, I'm tar and feathering myself, Vicky 2019. <laughs> I did though. So if you haven't seen that video and you wanna know what I did to tar and feather myself accidentally, go watch the video. So that's everything I watched, read, did in the month of July. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorites were for the past month. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. Become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you can ring that notification bell down there to be notified every time I post a video, even though it doesn't always work. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay strange. Bye! This video is brought to you by all these lovely creepy patron peeps that you see listed on the left hand side of the screen. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link that is in the description of this video. Um, no pressure, but it's there if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye!